Legend Series, written by Anoop Karuvala, Head of Marketing Communications at Isuzu. Disclaimer, this is an attempt in making a travelogue. There is no intent for any promotion of any kind of product or brand. Intent of this initiative was to build content and get a few transformed brand ambassadors. Nature of the terrain is designed to test vehicles to a fair degree and not very extreme. We try and avoid pure touristy areas. We seek beauty in the far ends of the world, untouched by commercialization. When you go on these drives, it's not just the destination that fascinates. It's a very profound feeling when you get to see the loneliest ends of our planet. As a warning, avoid attempting this solo without a 4x4 and without backup. You also need army permission, as some of the places are very close to the actual border. Some of these routes that we went on are not marked on Google Maps. Part of it was used by the raid and the Himalayan Rari. This is actually lonely planet. Day 0, 16th October. Team briefing and preparation. Crisis 1. The weather prediction says that it would snow at the Baralacha Pass. Had to leave immediately before the pass is blocked. The district administration would block traffic after 12 midnight. We had to leave the hotel like as if we had to evacuate a sinking ship. Day zero thus becomes day one. The idea was to stop in Zanska Valley at 3 a.m. and sleep for a while before resuming. Day one, Manali to Zanska. Altitude range 2,500 meters to 5,000 meters. Temperature range 10 degrees to minus 5 degrees Celsius. Terrain, tarmac, rocks, gravel and sand. Minor water wading. Thanks to the Atal Tunnel, we saved about 4-5 to five hours of travel across the Rotan Pass. Stopped for the night at the Zanska Valley. Made attempts to sleep in sub-zero temperatures. Ain't that a good bedroom at minus 4 degrees Celsius? The nights were clear and the stars were in all their glory. Reach Padum Post lunch, got some time to recuperate. Day 2, October 18th, Padum to Leh. Altitude 3500 meters approximately. Route, gravel and sand. Temperature, 10 degrees to minus 5 degrees Celsius. I love this town for its serenity and vast pastures, a small town which is mostly frequented by bikers.
some glacier en route. Crisis 2. The road to Leh had some landslides. The Zanskar district had blocked this road. Estimated time for clearance, one day. We had to go through Kargil. Plan A, direct and off-road route was 160 kilometers. Plan B through Kargil is 450 kilometers. The distance on the mountains is like eternity. Estimated time of travel, 12 to 13 hours. The town of Kargil. I really wanted to go to the war memorial but it was dark by that time. Padum and his nearby villages are supposed to have the purest DNA of Aryans. They, however, didn't look much different to me. Day 3, October 19th, Le Rath Rest Day. Altitude, 3,500 meters. Temperatures, minus 12 degrees to one degree Celsius. Now it's negative. Le City is a place teeming with tourists. It has a fair number of decent hotels and is like many small towns. If you are a military buff, the Defence Museum is a good place to spend some time. War Memorial the names of soldiers who died in the previous wars were all there. Gratitude to the Defence Forces for their sacrifices. Though I don't really get the concept of war. Day 4, 20th of October. Leh to Turtuk, the last point of India, via the Karadungla Pass and the Nubra Valley. Altitude 3500 to 5400 meters. Temperatures minus 10 to minus 7 degrees Celsius. To go to Turtuk, you have to cross the Karadungla Pass, the world's highest motorable pass. Border Roads Organization, Vijayak, welcomes you to the top of the world, mighty Karadungla. Altitude 17,982 feet. Your adventure is our daily routine. That's Nubra Valley. On the flight again. Post Karadungla, we cross the Nubra Valley. The Nubra Valley is nestled between two giant ranges, the Himalayan Range and the Karakoram Range. The Siachen Glacier is in the Karakoram Range. Siachen Glacier. There are many options of tent here, luxury ones as well. Nubra is home to the double hump camel. I didn't see them, but I was told that Nubra is the only second place where this is seen. Behind the Karakoram Range, you have the CPEC, China Pakistan Economic Corridor. The Siachen Glacier is the world's highest battlefield. The Indian government spends a whopping six crores per day to protect it. This is a vantage point which makes a large area within India in sight, so can't give it up. Nubra is a good place to camp and there are some luxury tents. It's a beautiful place by the side of the river Shayok. The river goes into Pakistan, Mount K2. That's in P.O.K. Before the 1971 war, this bridge divided India and Pakistan. Now, it's our territory. People beyond this bridge were part of P.O.K. During the 1971 war, India captured these villages. In places like Turtuk, people slept one night as Pakistanis and then woke up as Indians. Turtuk is a quaint village, situated at the meeting point of the Himalayan range and the Karakoram range. It's a valley, so the temperatures are very pleasant. I like this village, very peaceful, and the people were also very good. This is 
بالتستان This is Turtuk, open for tourism in 2010, and it's worth going there with family. I had yak meat here, and I enjoyed it. Day 5, 21st of October, Turtuk to Pangong, from the Pakistan border to the Chinese border. Temperatures, minus 10 degrees Celsius to minus 12 degrees Celsius. Apricots are the main source of revenue. Zero point, Hindustan ki akri dukaan, India's final shop. The area behind the fence is Pakistan. Terrain to Pangong is tarmac, gravel, slush and stream crossing. Majority of the terrain is wilderness. The next two days are network blackout days. The next two days, no fueling station. You'll have to fill diesel in jerry cans to last you that long. In case there is an avalanche or a detour, you will have to be prepared. Pangong is a 120 kilometers long lake. Approximately 30% is within India and about 70% within China. There is always a border dispute here. You can see the Chinese posts and the places where tanks are hidden. The Pangong So Lake is the world's highest brackish water lake. With fresh snowfall, the temperatures in the daytime is a maximum of 10 degrees and about minus 10 to minus 12 degrees Celsius in the night. The wind, probably about 15 to 20 kilometers an hour, makes it bone chilling. Due to the ecological sensitivity, or due to the limitation in building concrete structures in border areas, these are mostly temporary structures. These camps are okay in summer though. In winter and autumn, however, it's chilly because sub-zero degree winds finds its way into the wooden room. This place works on a generator which is switched off at 10 p.m. There is no room heating. The minus 10 degree Celsius is felt in all its glory. These mountain places, similar to Spiti, depend a lot on the melting ice from the mountains for water supply. In the night, they drain the water in all the pipes because if it freezes, the pipes burst. Well, the old hostel ways of bucket and mug is the only way out. Brushing your teeth in freshly melted ice water is not so easy. Siachen Warriors K2 highest point to Kutunad lowest point. Bharat is one. Hindustan AK. The Pangong at night. These are amateur pictures. Doesn't really capture the beauty of a full moon reflecting on the lake on a clear sky. It was amazing. There are many places like these on the lakeside. Not permanent structures, but good for summer months. Day 6. Pangong to Seoul Lake, Moriri. Altitude 4,250 meters to 4,500 meters. Temperatures 5 degrees Celsius to minus 15 degrees Celsius. Terrain rocks, slush, gravel, snow, water ice and sleet.
On the other side of this mountain is China. And this is a heavily fortified zone. You need military permission here. This road is a joy to ride. Most of it is no blacktop roads. It's either gravel or snow or ice. There is a whole valley which is the road. Basically, it's 60 to 70 kilometers wide. On the left behind the hills is China and we're not directly in the line of sight. Caution, heavy military presence. It's kind of eerie to be driving through heavily fortified zones. It's like driving through a peaceful war zone. The Somuriri is a lake more towards India, but not far from the Chinese border. We go en route through so many valleys, massive plateaus and some small mountains. On the way, we see the world's highest tank battlefield. The world's highest tank battlefield. In the war with China, this was a major action point. This is a military zone. Permissions from high level defense officials is required. I did see some classified stuff, but no pictures or videos. Met a few Malayali army men there. That traditional greeting. Namaskaram, Malayali ano? Natlevdiana? Was nice to go through that part. So Muriri is a freshwater lake. Here the temperatures are minus 3 degrees to minus 15 degrees. This was a little extreme. Water as usual freezes. It's too remote an area to have heated water in the taps. Phone network was there for four days before we reached. I was made to understand that the BSNL guy was still on his way. Day 7, So Muriri to Manali, Srinagar or Leh. Crisis 3. Plan A, return to Manali, 10 hours drive. Heavy snowfall the previous night. Baralacha Pass, closed. Plan cancelled. Plan B, go to Srinagar and then to Chandigarh. Drive time, 14 hours. Plan to leave at 5am at minus 15 degrees and winds. Zozila Pass, connecting to lay to Srinagar is closed due to heavy snowfall. Army working towards clearing it. The state of Ladakh is completely cut off by road. Can neither go to Kashmir nor to Himachal. Plan C. Return to Leh. Drive time 5 hours. This is now the only option. Honestly, I didn't feel like getting out in minus 15 degrees Celsius. It was really cold. Finally reached Lay for lunch. Game over. Two options available now. Either fly from Leh to Delhi on the 24th or wait till the army clears the Zozilla Pass to Srinagar and hope that there is no fresh snowfall. The danger in these terrains is that once snowfall starts, there are many avalanches. I chose option one, a no-brainer really, and I sent the vehicle through a driver. After all the snowfall, the vehicle finally reached on the 30th evening to Delhi, came back to civilization. I must appreciate the Indian army for the amazing amount of hardships that they go through to defend their territorial boundaries. A lot of respect for them. And thus, I finally boarded the flight to Delhi. Saw the Indus River on the way. 
and then back home to my family in Cochin. This was truly one of the most amazing and memorable journeys of my life. Thank you for listening in and good night.